Okay, so we define work as being a force times a distance. I'm going to keep it in its most simple, simple situation, a force times a distance um, displacement of an object. Okay. Well, we have to be, again, careful with these nuances, um, but I want to pull out a really cool example to, to talk about that. Um, when we think of work in our day-to-day -day life, like I'm going to go to work or I'm going, my, my chore at home is to sweep the floor that I'm doing work, um, that's not the same thing as what we think of in this definition. For example, suppose you're sitting there in the gym. I wish I was in a gym. It's been a long time since I've been able to go to the gym. But you're holding a dumbbell, so some big weight, really heavy weight there. You're holding it out at arm's length. And if we were in class, I'd actually give a student a weight and ask them to hold it out at arm's length and just hold it there so it's not moving. And then we'd have a discussion and say, are you doing any work? And you know, holding this weight out at arm's length it gets harder and harder and harder and you start to sweat. And it's like, I'm definitely doing some work here. This is hard stuff. But I'd say, no, you're not, because it's not going anywhere. You're applying a force. You're holding that force upward. Okay. But it's not going anywhere. There's no displacement. So, yeah, you're providing a force, but you're not doing any work. And at that point, the student probably wants to slap me. Um, but I say, okay, go ahead and put the weight down. And let's talk about this. What's going on? Your body was definitely exerting energy. It was using up energy uh, in order to hold that weight there. But... According to our rules, it says you're not doing any work. And that's because we're not thinking carefully about the details here. Um, if we look at this, definitely this weight did not move anywhere, so the, the work done on that uh, weight was zero. But the work your body did was not zero, and let's see why. Um, I, I love applying physics to biology. I think, I think it's one of the most beautiful physical systems to analyze. Now let's take a look at a piece of a muscle fiber. Okay. So here's some biology review or anatomy review. Is a muscle fiber is made up of a whole bunch of molecules that are kind of aligned like this. And they have a gap and then an identical match on the other side. And there'd be tons of these, lots and lots and lots of these. And these are called a Z-disc on either side here. And on the other side, this would repeat. So on the other side, there's some more of these sticking off, and then another unit there, and so on and so forth. And they repeat throughout a muscle fiber. Okay, these molecules are long molecules called actin. Yeah, they're actin filaments. And the thing interesting about actin is actin has a an asymmetry, meaning if I look from here down this way, I see something different than if I look from here down this way. So it's 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 got a pattern that is distinct, and so I know if I'm going left or right on this. Okay. Um, now in between them is a myosin molecule. Okay, and this one's cool. This molecule has a whole bunch of legs sticking off of it with two feet. And I'm speaking very uh, coarsely, but as a physicist, that's what we do. We break things down to their fundamental pieces. And he's got these feet, and there's tons and tons of them. So I'm, I'm again, only draw, drawing a representative few. Okay, and that would repeat down here and down here and keep going. And these things are called molecular motors. This one is a myosin actin um, uh, molecular motor. And these feet actually have receptors or their conformation fits into the grooves of the actin filament. And they take steps by hydrolyzing ATP. And when you flex your muscle, it causes these to hydrolyze ATP and they want to walk. They want to walk down the actin filaments, which causes that to pull these actin filaments inward. Okay, so these are walking this way. These are walking this way, which effectively is pulling these actin filaments together. So it causes 
them to come together and that causes the muscle to contract. Okay. Now, when you flex your muscle, and when this student here is holding that weight up, they're starting to sweat, okay, they have millions of these muscle, these molecular motors walking at the same time. And these individually are slipping all the time. So this one right here might walk forward and then slip, and then walk forward and then slip, walk forward and slip. And sometimes an entire set will slip. And sometimes an, an, an entire section between Z discs will slip. And these molecules will then grab on and they'll walk again and slip. And grab on, walk again and slip. And so when you're holding this muscle or holding this weight without it moving, each one of these zones is doing work continuously. They are applying a force and the object is moving in a distance. Okay, so this force on this is this way because they're, these are trying to walk this way and are effectively they're pulling it backwards and the and the um, zones get pulled backwards. And so you get this positive work. The work is a force times the displacement and it's positive because they're in the same direction. And so your muscles are doing work according to our physical definition in our theory. And we can use that to then talk about conservation of energy, about how chemical energy can be turned into productive work energy or by doing work and create a potential energy and that can cause motion. And so that is the, the student truly is doing work, but it's inside their muscles where we see it happen. It's not in the position or the motion of this dumbbell. This is a beautiful, beautiful example of how um, you can apply physics to such a beautiful and complex system as the body.